Hello everybody, my name is Jared Bendis and today we're going to do a quick, well it's going to be a very long, Adobe Illustrator tutorial geared towards creating a sign with layers from SVG files to go and eventually make into the Glowforge. So a lot of different things going on. I am not going to say that we are doing expert Illustrator work here. I'm going to show you some basic things that I work with in Illustrator. There's a million ways of doing it. If you're watching this and go, you could do this better. Yeah, I know I can do this better. There's a million different tricks. I'm showing you the way I work, the way I work. Whenever you're working with tools, there's a million different ways of doing it. So there you go. That's my disclaimer. Also, if you like what you've seen here, you can follow me on uh, Facebook, on uh, Instagram, on Twitter, on Twitch, on YouTube. I'm, I'm Jared X2 pretty much everywhere. All right, let's get started. Welcome to Illustrator. Now, I know there are a lot of free tools for doing vector-based graphics out there, and I'm not using one of them. I, these are the tools that I use. I have access to the full Adobe suite because I'm working in the Adobe suite constantly. And of course, you know, regardless of what it costs, that's it's the tool I use. I'm going to pay to use that tool. Is it intuitive? No, it's not the, it is it powerful? Yes. So first things first, this is Illustrator. I hate the way Illustrator looks by default. So I'm gonna come over here to Window, Workspace, and I'm gonna go from Essentials, which is the way Illustrator starts, and I'm gonna to move to Essentials Classic, which is going to magically move everything all over the place, which makes me a lot happier, just the way I work. All right, so we've got all that. You hide this for now. I've got a big clean slate. All right, file, new. Now, normally I would, normally when I'm working with the Glowforge, I actually start off with a print size of 18 by 11, which is what most of the sheets of wood I have cut for the Glowforge are set already to. So I basically set my canvas size up to be that. However, because the sign I'm working with today is actually gonna be bigger than that, and we're gonna be creating pieces for it and different types of things, I'm actually gonna start off with a larger piece than that. And I'm gonna say that I'm gonna go with 22 by 22 inches. And there's a reason for this. So here it is, my big empty canvas, 22 by 22 inches. The reason is, is that I already started out with a round. Let's come over here and make a round. Ellipse tool. Now, of course, if I draw an if I draw an ellipse, there it is. It's an ellipse. But if I hold the shift key down, it constrains it to its proportion. Here's a really neat thing. In most programs, if you hold the shift key down, it makes you know the oval a a circle or a rectangle a square. Photoshop recently did the other way around. That if you don't hold the shift key down it constrains the proportions, and so it's very confusing. They're catering to new people instead of just old fogies who are so used to pressing the shift key down. But now, if I want to do this, I hold the shift key down, press the shift key down, and I drag a circle, and I made a circle. Now, is it big enough? No, but I can come over here to my properties window and say that it is 20 inches up by 20 inches. I don't have the little, um, the little chain locked, and I'm okay with that. So I have a 20-inch circle. The reason I have a 20 inch circle is because in addition to having a Glowforge, I have a maker made Maslow CNC machine, which allowed me to cut out the big base round circle at a time. And that's what I have is a big round circle. Now, so that I can uh, have a reference for it, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to make it let's sort of this like light color there to imply that it's already wood. And there it is. Beautiful. That is my circle. Now, I like working in layers. It's a thing that I like to do. I like having lots of layers so I can lock them and unlock them and view them and not view them. That's just the way I work. So I'm going to come over to my layers menu and I'm going to take this layer and I'm going to call my base 20 inch, oops, my base 20 inch circle because there is nothing wrong with having very clearly defined layer names. And then of course, I'm going to lock that layer because I don't need to mess with it for now. I'll be needing to mess with it later, but not this second. All right, so I'll make a new layer, and this is the layer on which I'm going to work. Now you're like, all right, so what kind of a, of, of a, of a scene I'm going for? Well, ideally what I'm looking to do is I'm looking to have the word Arthur up top because there's a little baby who's about to be born, his name is Arthur, and the sign is for him. And because Arthur is a very... Um, heraldic name, I guess. Uh, we're going to have a castle and another castle, and we're going to have trees, and we're going to have a, a, they're going to have mountains in the background. So that's where we're going to start with. We may even add a few more elements along the way. So where do we start? Well, let's start with the text. The text is probably the easiest thing we can do. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to grab my text tool. 
A R T H U R. Arthur. Boy, that is small. Well, it's going to be bigger in a second. Highlight that. And let's make it big enough for me to see. 72 point. I can see it. There you go, Arthur. Not a really good font. Let's come over here and call this Arthur. There it is. So again, not a really good font for this type of thing. So let's come over here and find a very good font. Gothic Black Letter, which is a font we recently purchased. Now that's a really good font. Again, if I grab and, and do this, I can do this any way I want. That's terrible. Undo that. Hold the Shift key down and I can make it wider. Now, in addition to doing that, if I come over here and I lock this, and if I lock this, it'll constrain its proportions, I can say that I want to make sure that my text is, let's say, um, 8.25 inches wide, right? So there you go, it's eight, eight and a quarter inches wide, and that's going to be my text. Now, when you go to laser cut it, the laser, cut, hate, laser cutter and most of the programs hate the fact that this is very, very high level. By high level, I mean that while everything we're doing is vector-based, usually we're dealing with these vector-based, which are literally going to be connecting the dots vector-based. In this case, we're dealing with what's called a vector-based font, which would be a two-type font, which means that we've got two different vector things going along the way. Since I know I no longer need to edit this text, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to object expand. Now, there's two things that you can do here. Rasterize turns it into an image, which would be great if I was going to engrave it. Expand is basically going to say, you know that embedded font behind it? Get rid of it and just turn it into a series of vectors, which is exactly what it does. So now basically I have a shape and I have a fill. And if I come over here, what you're going to notice is, is I now have a group. And in, each of, in, in that group, I have each of the letters separately. A-R-T-H-U-R. -R. Each of them are separate. Now, the fact that it's a group is a good thing, but let's come over here and let's put a little um, black stroke on it. I'm going to put a uh, quarter, uh, 0.25 point black stroke, and I'm going to make this transparent for now so you can see what the cuts are going to be. Mm, there you go. Or I can say, what color is that going to be? Let me come over here and let's say make it white and assume that I'm going to paint this white. Generally, when I'm playing right now, I'm going to actually think about both the, the stroke and the fill. The fills actually don't even exist. When I go to cut, I'm only cutting the strokes. The fills are just so I have an aesthetic sense of what I'm looking at. Also, later on, I'm going to further ungroup it until it's down to its component parts, right? So I, you can ungroup it until there's nothing left to ungroup. But when I go to do things like center it, if I were to do that, uh, it would actually center all the letters together, which would be bad. So I definitely want to keep it as a group, object group, for now because I want to basically have this as a single unit that I can move around. And so um, I can move them around, but I can, again, ungroup this later if I need to. Now, one of the things that I'm also going to want is some sort of a jig for me to put the letters in. And by that, what I mean is, is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to create a rounded rectangle. The rounded rectangle is just going to be a little bit bigger than the word Arthur. And what that's going to do is going to allow me to uh, lay down this jig, which the, the letters are going to be cut off of. It's just going to save me some grief later on. Now that I've made this, this has to be very big. This has to be bigger than the word. Um, that quarter point outside. I'm going to have uh, no fill. I don't need a fill on it. And then, of course, I can, I can take both of these objects, Control A, and I can center them together in both directions. So now this is all centered together. And of course, now that I've done that, I can grab all the objects. I can ungroup them. Now they're all loose. Now you can see what's left is all the letters in the rectangle. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to group them again. So that later on, this entire piece now works as a unit. Those letters centered in there. And again, I just do this because it'll be nice to have this piece of wood that the letters will be set into. I can adjust it perfectly and then lift that wood off before I glue them. So I can figure out exactly where this is going to go. And I can I can now, instead of trying to worry about where the letters go, I can worry about where this block goes. The letters are, of course, centered within it. Good to go. We have our Arthur layer done. Nothing to do to it anymore. So I'm going to lock it. And, and as I've just gotten going, I think it's time to save this project. So I'm going to save this project as um, Arthur circle final yeah i've got te some test projects in there i will admit i've done this one once or twice already just saving as an illustrator file don't worry about this illustrator is our project file illustrator is the file that we're going to keep working in which is what we want to be doing along the way so far so good excellent now i need some 
mountains in the background. Now, the cool thing is, is I actually went out and bought a bunch of clip art mountains. Now, all these clip art mountains I purchased and I'm able to use them for anything but sharing the file. So I, I can make you this project. I can cut this project. I can sell you the project, but I can't sell you the project file because I'm not allowed to do that. But as I go through the mountains, what I realize is, is that of all the mountains I have, the one that's going to work best for my project is mountains number 69. Now, if you notice, I have both a PNG, which is a graphic file of it, and SVG, which is a vector file of it. Again, the vector file is the one I want to work with because they're already ready for me to cut. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to file, and I'm going to, I can't do it yet because all my layers are locked. I need a layer to work on. Here's a layer to work on. File, place. Now, I want to start off by, by giving you a quick warning real fast that I, I, I didn't tell you about something that I needed to tell you. And that is, whenever you're working in Illustrator, do not just open a file. Don't just grab an SVG and start working in it or a PNG and start working in it. You always want to start with a clean file. Bring your files into it. Weird things happen if you start with somebody else's file. So what I always do is I start with a blank file that I've set up from scratch and saved, and then I can place into it the graphics that I need. In this case, it would be graphic number 69 SVG. Because it's SVG, now whenever, I, I, whenever I'm ready, I hit drop, drops it into place, and there you go. Now the cool thing about this is, again, I can hold the shift key down, constrain my proportions, and I can make it bigger and bigger and bigger until I'm happy with the way that this looks. And again, now the fun part about this is, is I could even be a little bit weirder here, and I can say, you know what, maybe I don't mind stretching it. Because unlike other things, you really aren't going to necessarily notice right away that I've stretched it. Don't worry about the fact, by the way, that I've gone off the edge. We're going to deal with that in a whole other beast. Matter of fact, there's a whole bunch of things that we're going to have to deal with in terms of that. Now, what's kind of neat about this is if we look over here, we're going to see that, um, well, we can't see it right now. So I can't click this because it's a locked layer. What I'm going to do at this point is, is I'm going to go over to view and I'm going to turn on the rulers. I like seeing the rulers. The rulers are kind of neat. One of the other things that you do, you can do is you can actually grab a guide from outside of the rulers, which is kind of fun. And of course, we know that this is uh, 11 inches that way. And this is 11 inches that way. And of course, everything should be lined up properly, but let's just double check real fast. I'll start with this and go, oh no, I'm not lined up properly. All right, now I am. Lock that layer. Come over here to my author layer. All right, now I'm lined up properly. Now, one of the things I'm also gonna be looking at is my negative space, making sure there's enough white space around the edges. It's not just uh, margins visual, not just from a design perspective, not just from a, a building perspective. And then lastly, we've got our layer, which we'll call, by the way, mountain. Mountain. Name your layers. And I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to go... I like the idea of my peak being right in the center. It doesn't have to be, by the way. Um, and decide how big I want this to be. Not going to be quite sure what it's going to look like yet, but we're going to start with this uh, to start with. All right. Very good. And we're going to give it a thin black stroke. And I have no... I'll make it a thin black stroke, so we'll go with that 0.25. And then we are going to come over here and give it, let's say, a brown mountain background. Now, that's an interesting one, but I will tell you that the rest of this is also going to be turned into, um, is also going to be turned into something. Like this is going to be one color and this is going to be another color. Right now, if I were to cut this out, it would be this is, I mean, technically they're two different colors, but I want to, like, I want to be thinking about this shape here, which is a negative shape, as an actual second shape. I'm not going to do it just yet, but in your mind's eye, I'd like you to imagine this is actually filled in, and we'll get to that. The reason I don't want to do it just yet is when I bring in the other elements, I might still end up rearranging things. We're still doing the composition, and one of the most important things about any sort of design is, is you can't paint the pot until you've built it. You don't want to do the fine detail polishing while you're doing your broad stroke assembly. 
spends a lot of time trying to, you, if you're, you're almost sure everything's going to look in a very particular way, but that means you're not really open to the adventure. And the adventure says, this is what I think it's going to look like. I'm going to put it all together, but I'm not going to do all the polish until I know what it's going to look like. So it's good enough for now. Lock that into place. New layer. And in this case, I'm going to add my trees. I, by the way, uh, well, in addition to buying uh, the uh, the mountains, I bought trees. That's correct. I bought trees. I actually called forest. So let's come over here, and I'm going to be using forest 13. Make sure I've got a layer. File. Place. Go to that folder. Grab the SVG file. Already vector-based. Pop it on place. And... There we go. Now, let's take a look at this one. I'm going to start by, by going backwards here. I'm going to add the, the black line. I'm going to make it green, obviously. And I'm going to do a 0.25. Now, remember, the colors here are just simply guidance, because at the end of the day, I can do whatever I want. Hold the shift key down, and I make it big. Now, here's what I do know about the trees. I do know that I like having these two pine trees. At least I like seeing part of them. So I like this one over here, and I definitely want more of this one here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to squish it over here, but I want to make sure that this doesn't exactly touch the edge. So I'm going to kind of bring it in so that's a decent amount of margin here. And I'm going to bring it in so it's a decent amount of margin here. Now, this is a, another good example of, are you sure? And the answer is, no, I'm not sure. Now, the center part's irrelevant because of this other stuff. I mean, if it's higher or it's lower, I'm not quite sure where it's going to be yet. So that's why I want to make sure that I'm not, you know, doing any detail work because I'm still just trying to figure out what goes where along the way. So I kind of like the way the tree works there, but maybe, maybe I want to make it a little bit lower. See, here's what I don't want. I don't want to do it so low that there's this weird little tangency there. I don't want it to, you want things to overlap or, or to not overlap. You want to actually get the, that is really, like, that's bad. Uh, that's better. But that's, that's worse. See that? You don't want the little dots in there. So you want to be very... You almost want to make sure everything looks sort of very purposeful. And that's uh, that's more important than that. So that'll work good. That looks good for now. So I've got this and this. All right. Good. Let's hit save again. Lock this layer. And let's create a new layer. Now I've got two new more layers that I know I need. This is going to be Castle 1. Now with Castle 1... The people I bought the castles from, oh my god, they made so many Disney castles, which I, again, I don't want to go anywhere near the Disney castles, but I do want to go through the regular non-Disney castles, non-Disney castles, right? Um, so some of these are non-Disney castles. There's a great folder here called 34 Castles, which guess what? There's 34 castles in it. File, place, and if I go into the castle folder... What you're going to find is the first one, I like ca is Castle 1. Um, castle 1 is there. I'm going to call it, uh, but I'm going to call that one Castle 2. I'm calling it Castle 2 because there's actually a second castle I want, which is Castle 16. So I'm going to hide that one for a second. Learn to hide and lock your layers. Those are both useful skills. This one is going to be called Castle 1. And it is actually going to be Castle number 16. File, place, castle number, oops, 16. Oh, actually, I was right, by the way. This is castle 2, and the other was castle 1. All right, we'll hide that for a second. Bring this one back. Now, here's the thing about castle 1. It's got some stuff that I don't like. It's all right. Let's take it out. Let's say, oops, let's come over here. Let's grab it, and let's make it big for now so I can take a look at it. Stop that. I, I forgot to have the shift key down. So hold the shift key down. Make it nice and big so I can see it. And what I'm going to say is, is that I don't like all the pieces in here. Now, if I go into my Layers menu and I expand it, you can see that there's a group, and in that group there's another group, and in that group there are three pieces. Oh, my God, so many subgroups. Let me show you what I mean, by the way, before that. I want you to look over here where it says Castle, Group, Group, Subgroups. If I come over here, let me lock everything but the layer I'm working on. Ob, grab it, 
object ungroup. Now it's just a group of several uh, subgroups, object ungroup. Now it's just the subgroups, the sub-items. Why was it that way? Well, I inherited it. That's the way the SVG was structured. That's what I brought in, and that's what Illustrator did. did. So you could literally open a file, and it would be group and group and group and group. You don't know what it is. You need to learn to look at what the pieces look like. At worst case scenario, isolate them and ungroup until you get to your components. Now that they're ungrouped, I can come over here and say, I don't like that, and I don't like that. And then I can come over here and say, I do like this. Like before, I'm going to add a black outline on it. And I'm going to make it, let's say, a dark gray. Now, how big do I want this one? Well, I do want it fairly wide. And I definitely want to constrain, so I want to make sure that this is locked. And let's say I'm going to go like um, 13 inches or 13 area. There you go, big 13.275 inches. Now, of course, we do have the center marks and everything should line up over here. I want to come over here and again make sure that Again, the eye has room to travel. There's a nice little breathing room here. There is some breathing room here. That's good. Excellent. That makes me happy. Does that make me happy? That makes me happy. Good. All right. So that's one castle down. I can lock that one in place, and I can come back with this castle. Now with this castle, which I'm going to unlock, this castle, I'm going to bring this up, and I'm going to grab it, and I'm going to make it nice and big. Again, constrain your proportions so I can see it, and I realize I'm only going to keep several parts of this castle. Before I do that, let's see what I did before. Black outline, 0.25 points, with a lighter gray interior. Or I could go a darker gray. It doesn't matter. This is arbitrary. Now, again, let's take a look at what we have here. We've got a group, and another group, and then the pieces. So I could object ungroup object ungroup and then I can delete the pieces I don't want which would be this piece and this piece the rest of these pieces since I want them to use as a work as a unit I will actually grab them all and I will group them back together this way I can work them as a unit and I can say that I want this piece to be um, 10 10 inches wide all right there you go so and then I can decide so this gives me sort of my my, front is, my, my frontal view of my castle, which is great, right? So now I have uh, the castle and this type of stuff, and I'm pretty happy with this. That looks pretty good so far. Um, but we have other considerations at hand, and that would be asking ourselves, how does everything really look? Well, let's turn off the guides real fast. Uh, I can come over here, and I can clear my guides, hide my guides. There you go. And I can take a look and I can say, does this look pretty good? Yeah, it looks pretty good. It doesn't look perfect because there's other things that I want. For instance, I, I, do, I want the grass to, go, to extend all the way down. So while I lock this layer over here, come on, you can do it. There you go. I'm going to go back over to my trees layer, unlock it, and decide that I really need another shape down here made of green right so i can come over here and i can grab the rectangle tool if i was in the right layer and i could say i would like this shape down here to be green that is not green yet but i can add the color green i wonder which color that was oh that's the right color green and of course it has the same stroke so if you look over here turn off these layers hide hide we now have this green there but there are two different layers. This is a problem for people, right? I've got these two different shapes. They're the same color. But remember, if you look over here, uh, even though you can't see it right away, because there is a border, let's actually grab these two. Let me grab both of the layers. If I were to make this uh, a white interior and I would make the stroke, let's say, bigger, then this is what the Glowforge would do. It would cut all the lines, which means it would cut these very strange... Actually, make it, instead of making it white, I'll make it transparent. And you'll see that this layer... Turn off every layer. This layer is going to really cut out weird shapes, which is what I do not want. I really only want the tops of the trees and eventually this to curve. Well, before I do that, let's come back over here, adjust these two trees. Let's make them the same color green. 
and let's come over here and make it 0.25. So what I want to do is I want to merge these two shapes together, and it's very quite simple to do that. I come over here, and I use the Shape Builder tool. This is one of my favorite tools, and I use this tool quite frequently. If I've got two shapes that I want to put together, what I do is I select all the shapes I want to work together, and then you basically draw with the Shape Builder tool, with the shape builder, I'm sorry, not there. With the shape builder tool, I've got the right one. By the way, if you ever see a little triangle in the corner of a tool in Illustrator, that means click and hold me. There's more. That's what that means. Click and hold. There's the shape builder tool. Now all I do is I draw on the shapes that I want to be together. One, two, three, four. I want to make sure you get all the little edges in there, right? And if I do that and I let go, it's one shape. Voila, it merges shapes so easily, and I don't have to worry about anything else. That is one of my go-tos. You put two shapes together, you use the Shape Builder tool, you draw on them, they're all selected, you draw on them, they merge, and you're done. It's a very useful tool. We'll be using it again. Notice, by the way, oh, there's a group in here, and the group, and the group, and the group. Look at that. There's, there's like three layers of groups here for no apparent reason. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ungroup, ungroup, and that's it. There's no more groups here. Does that make sense? Let's see if something else happened that way. What about our mountains? Yeah, our mountains are made up of, well, there are guides. Oh, that's where the guides are. The guides are on the mountain layer. Let's delete our guides for now. We don't need those. But if we look on the mountain layer... We're going to see that the this is for some reason this shape is inside of this group, which we can easily ungroup. We don't need it to be grouped just yet. There's only one item. Arthur, we need to be grouped. By the way, my my circle isn't is is fine because I made my circle. So there you go. So let's say that we're really really happy with these trees. All right, we're really really happy with these trees. But I, I want the shape to be rounded. And what I want to do is I want to merge the, the shape. Uh, I basically, what I want to do is have a beautiful circle cut over here and then all the stuff I want gone. Now, technically, if I left this piece in here, the Glowforge would do it itself, but that's sloppy, and I want to make sure that I, I, I every layer is its entirety. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here, to, and I'm going to duplicate my circle. I'm duplicating my circle just so that my original circle is sort of safe along the way. I like to do this quite frequently. Normally, I would actually back up my tree layer as well, but I kind of know what's going to happen next, so I'm not too worried. So I've got my two layers. I've got my tree layer, and I've got my base 20-inch circle copy layer. And if you look at this again, I've got only two shapes on the screen. Everything else is hidden and locked, so I don't have to worry about it. And I'm actually going to hide this one too, right? So I've got two shapes. I've got the shape of the trees and the shape of the circle. And what that means is if I come over here and I click on the trees, if I go to Object, Path, Divide Objects Below, this is my other favorite tool. Now again, it's only going to work if there's a shape and another shape. But look what happens when I hit Divide Objects Below. I do this. Now my, if I hide this, what's left on my tree layer? Right? It doesn't look like there's anything here, but let's take a quick look. Nope. Nothing on that layer. That layer is empty. So it's a good thing I only made I have a copy over here. Let's turn on this layer for a second. What you're going to notice is, is that if I come down over here, there's really going to be three items. Three items? What are the three items? Well, we've got the top of the trees. We've got the bottom of the trees. And then we've got this one teeny little itty bitty triangle here, which legitimately gets cut out. Now, do I need the uh, the top of the trees? Nope. So I can delete that path. Do I need the, that little triangle there? Definitely not. So I can delete that path. And now I can rename this layer trees. And I can get rid of the empty layer. And that's why I backed up my circle, by the way, because otherwise I would have lost my circle. And of course, because I've got this shape here, we know we want it to be what color? Green. Of course, I have to highlight the item first and say, you are green with a 0.25 stroke. So now my trees layer is perfect, or perfect for now. What I mean by perfect, though, is 
is that when I put the base circle underneath it, it is just beautiful. Isn't that great? I want you to take a moment and just like, absorb what I just did. There are really a couple things that I did here. And the first one was I grabbed two shapes and I merged them together. And the second thing was is I grabbed two shapes and I separated them from each other. There are other ways of doing it, but this is the way I like to do it. Don't yuck my yum. All right, let's continue. By hitting save. No, it hasn't. Continue. All right. So now that we've done that, if we look at our castle and our castle, like our composition is going to be a little bit different there, right? See, it makes it does change the way that this entire thing looks, which I'm keen on. Now we actually, ooh, this is interesting because when I was playing with this yesterday, I ran into slightly different solutions, but I'm okay with that. I'll show you the one I made yesterday. But the, what if I, what if there were bits and pieces of something I didn't like poking through? Like there's one right there. It's a good way of demonstrating this, by the way. I'm going to take Castle 2. And uh, instead of actually turning things on and off like this, click the Outline button. Which, oh, I don't want to do that. That's not what I meant to do. I actually am going to unlock Castle la these two layers. And I'm going to say, you know what? Both of you are transparent. And both of you have a stroke that I is big enough to see. Right now, let's go all the way to one point so I can see you. All right, so there you go. A stroke big enough to see. Lock those two into place. And I'm going to come back over to my trees and really take a look at what's going on over here. So what's funny is, is that this is all visible here. And I have a little tree poking out over here. But if you look over here, this is nothing, right? I'm doing all this detail work. But is anyone going to see it? Nope. And that's kind of a challenge for me. Because, A, I'm having the laser do this, and that means there's more things to break off and be delicate, but I really don't need to do that at all. So what I'm going to do here is, is I'm going to go over to my direct selection tool, and I'm actually going to come over here, and I'm going to start deleting um, points that I don't need. And eventually, now I've got to make sure, oops, I've got to make sure that when I do that, that I don't accidentally delete some, I don't leave anything there, which has happened before. All right, so that looks good. That looks good. And what happens here is, is I've given myself a much cleaner area to work with. So that'll be what it cuts in the background. Again, why do that if no one's going to see it? Now let's take a look over here, right? Look at all this stuff. All of these, all these, these little pieces here that no one's going to see. Oops, don't do that. All right. So, delete. Maybe not like that. Let's come over here and zoom further in. Further in. All right, so this I need. We're seeing these. Group selection tool. Let's see how this one works. Nope, not the way that one works. Sorry about that. There's always tricks to these things. All right, let's see if I can use the delete anchor point tool. See if that one works any better. Ah, uh, yes. So I'm over here using the delete under the pen tool is the delete anchor point tool. The delete anchor point tool is going to be very useful. Again, look at this. I can see in here, but all of this is in the background, right? This is all... All right none of this none of this is visible right this is visible none of this is visible so just to make my life easier i will start removing these things all right da, 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 da. you know like come on isn't there a better way isn't there a better way to do this and the answer is of course there's a better way to do this right take a look take a look what am i trying to do i'm trying to get rid of all of this lines without going through and doing it on my hand. Well, let's do what we did before. Let's grab a rectangle. And remember, we, why don't, we, don't, we don't want to include up there. Let's grab a rectangle and go like all the way over here like that, right? Now I can grab everything, 
grab the shape builder tool and come over here and boom all those details are gone and that's going to make my life a lot easier because I'm not going to have to worry about cutting them. Now, again, there's a few in here that I have to worry about. Now, this one's going to be an interesting one because this will go behind it. This one you wouldn't even see. So I can come over here and just say, nope, 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 nope. Why bother? You're invisible. No one's going to see you. Beautiful. I'll leave that one in there. I like those cuts. Um, this one, however, I don't need. 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 That's beautiful. Let's come back over here. Yes, I'm getting rid of the one that poked through. I'm fine with that. I don't need it. Nobody. Now, I want to make sure I do this properly. Otherwise, I'm going to have like weird little spacey things here, which I don't want to have. So I'll spend a moment just removing anchor points that I don't need. Now, if, you're, if you make a mistake, you will create anchor points that don't need to be there. And that will be a problem later on. So you want to make sure that you really are paying attention to what you're doing here. Actually, is that a separate piece? Yeah, that whole piece is separate. I can delete that. I can delete that. And I can, I didn't merge the pieces there, so that's fine. All right, what about these? Mm, these are all, again, in the background. So, right. No, these are visible. These are the ones you can see. These are the ones we're keeping. We'll leave this one there. It makes a nice arc. So we'll leave that one there. This is good. But this is all behind the scenes and no one's going to see it. Matter of fact, I want to make sure I get rid of that one because that one's going to be a pain in the ass for me later on. Dun, dun. And again, just deleting the points I don't need. I'll spend a few more minutes with this. Remember, the, the, the smoother I do this, the faster the glow forge will work because all those little ups and downs and ups and downs and there's more burn points and other things. So I'm, I'm basically not, I'm going to not burn, not cut, but is invisible. So I do want to take a moment or two. The moment or two here is, is, again, less time on your laser. I also want to point out that this is a real-time demo. I'm showing you everything in real time, semi-real time, because I've already done this once, so I've, I've made my mistakes already a few times. Um, it's okay that you make mistakes, but not necessarily in a video, so I decided to redo it. The first one I just was a little bit sillier, so this is a redo video. I'm redoing it. Also because when I, I did the first burn I made, not a mistake, but I realized there were a couple things we wanted to do differently, so we thought, why not just redo it? There we go. Those will stay. And they'll be behind the scenes and no one will see them. Now, this is that thing I mentioned earlier about polish, right? I couldn't do this if I didn't quite know my composition was good. But I know my composition is good because I'm very happy with the way that the stuff is looking. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to look good. And it's going to cut really, really fast. Oops. There's a little piece in there. See it? There it is. It's gone. There's another piece in there. Now, here's a fun one right there, right? I come over here. You're like, wait a second. Why are all these things on the tree level? Well, let's like let's turn off the big compound trees and see what we have left. We've got this piece here. Matter of fact, we have all these pieces here, which I don't think need to be there, so I can delete them. Uh-oh. What do we have? We have a hole. The funny part is, is the holes where we can't see it, but that hole bothers me. So how do we fix the hole? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Well, we could do what we did before. I could just draw a piece, highlight everything, and use the Shape Builder tool. And now the hole is gone. Yay! That's one way of doing it, and that is the way we're going to do it today. Shape Builder Tool is your friend. Save. 
And just to double check where we are, let's turn off the tree layer. Let's put our and let's put our castles back on, and let's make them uh, gray with a white border. Right? I highlighted they are viewable. I'm going to highlight everything. Oops. Grab everything, and I'm going to say gray with a black border. Beautiful. And for some reason, I have done something stupid here, but what have I done? I'm doing something stupid with visibility. I'm not quite sure what it is yet. Indicate selected art. Click to select art. I've done something with my visibility. Hold on a second. Um, all right. Well, we'll get back to that in a second. So in the meantime, we have a very happy layer here. Let's lock castle 2 and let's fix castle 1. Grab castle 1 and make it gray. There we go. Castle 1 is happy. Grab Castle 2 and make it gray. Castle 2 is happy. Yay! All right. So we've got little bits of trees knocking out of it. We've got a little bit of room up front, which is nice, but we do have a few other issues that we need to deal with. Now, what are those issues? Well, the first thing is, is that I don't that I don't like this floating here. I really would like this to be more complete here. I think that would look better if this was actually more closed than open. Which means I need to, because also it's going to make a big difference when I do support. That's number one. Number two, I'd like some windows in these towers. So I need to do two different things and uh, we'll do sort of both in both ways. So what am I going to do? Well, I could just build a shape and merge them together. That would work. But I have to decide where I want to be. Actually, I probably could just kind of build and merge a shape there. This is so funny because this is actually different than what I did the other day. So what would that mean? That means that I would want to... Let me come over here and let us... First things first... Let's come over here and let's break this apart. Ungroup. So now I'm just dealing with the one piece, right? Just the one piece. And so in some ways, what I want to do is just expand out over here like this. So now that I've said that, the question is, is can I do it with what I already have? That's the sort of the first question. In other words, can I do this without adding anything? Like, can I grab my direct selection tool and just come over here and grab the one anchor point, bring that anchor point over here, bring this anchor point over here, and then bring this anchor point over here. Can I do that? Hmm. Let's click away. I don't like the curve there. All right, let's come back over. So I'm going to grab my direct selection tool again. And this time I'm going to grab that anchor point and I'm going to bring it down. And then I'm going to grab the handle and straighten it up a bit. And then I'm going to grab this other handle and straighten it down a bit. Do, 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 do. That's what handles are for. So I keep the curve, but not too much of the curve. And then I can grab the handle over and I can say, yes, you look good. 
except now I have that little bit of, of um, a little bit of the other castle in there. So I'm going to bring it over a little bit more so it looks like that. Voila. Hmm. Not bad, not bad. So how do I do it on the other side? Well, let's think about this for a moment. This piece is the exact same as this piece, but flipped over and, and, and not aligned properly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece, I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to paste it. Then I'm going to take the piece and I'm going to arrange it, I'm sorry, transform it, where I am going to mirror it. And that is called a reflection. And I'm going to reflect it vertically, and I'm going to say, okay. And now it's, it's mirrored. Then I'm going to take this piece, I'm going to put it exactly on top of the other piece, where it's supposed to be. Right? Now it's exactly where the other piece was, which is great. And if I go back to my layers, and I click on my layers, you're going to see that we now have a fourth layer. One of them, of course, that's a good one. That's the good one. And this one here is the one underneath it, which I no longer need. So I can delete that one. That looks pretty cool. Highlight all three of these. Grab the Shape Builder tool and go. Now I got to be careful here, right? It's only one. I don't want to. I don't want to do that. I want to do that. So I'll go shape, 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 shape. Ta-da! And now we have something that's going to be a lot more stable, and we only have one piece. Beautiful. That makes me happy. All right, let's hit save, and let's close, and let's do that. So remember, what did I just do is I used my direct selection tools to modify my points. The other big tool in our arsenal is to be able to understand what anchor points and nodal points are, to be able to manipulate the handles, the anchor, anchor points, by either moving them, deleting them, angling them, things like that. So, what's next, you ask? Well, I mentioned the windows. Well, to do the windows would be really interesting. I have to decide which window I like. Do I want to use the big windows here, or do I want to use the little windows here? Either window would be acceptable. The problem is, is I don't actually have that window as a shape yet. If I had that window as a shape, I know exactly what I could do with it. I could do the subtraction thing if I actually had them somewhere. So I need to get that shape into a shape. Well, let's do that. First, let's take a look at it again, and let's take a look at the windows using our direct selection tool. Let's come over here and see if we're happy with the way the windows even look. All right, so I've got Castle 2 unlocked. I come over here, and I can say that is my that is my window. I can say, you know what, it'd look a little bit better like that. And I can come over here and do the same thing, or I can look at these nodal points and go, you know, round is good, but oops, undo, I moved it. Round is good, but you know, you're just a little too pointy there at times. Kind of like a bean right there. It's a little too pointy there. So we're going to fix that. Now, I can't just grab the one path because the path is a negative space to the positive space here. Now, I'm sure someone's going to tell me that there's a brilliant way of doing this and I'm being an idiot, but the way I do it is kind of fun. And it's very useful for other things. And so I'm going to come over here and I'm going to save my project before I move on. And I'm going to duplicate my castle. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say duplicate layer. The reason I'm doing it is, is what I'm going to do possibly is going to be destructive. As I said before, we're going to be careful about that. Lock and hide it. So I'm only working on my fake castle. And in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what's called a live paint. And what live paint allows you to do is it allows you to fill any section based on a, se a section and it turns it into a shape. So I go to Object, Live Paint, Make. And now this object here is Live Paintable. Now I can come over here to my Live Paint bucket, and I can say, you know what? I can pick whatever shape I want. I can do the whole shape, or the now the negative space, the negative space. I like uh, this one here, and I'm going to fill it with that. Now when I do that, I can even make it a different color, just so you can see what I've done. Oops. Maybe I should highlight it before I do that. So I can come over here and grab this shape. I'm actually in a sub-shape, by the way. But don't worry, it's still there. Make that a different color. Come back into my main layer. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my object again. And I'm going to, say to, I'm going to tell Live Paint to stop. Live Paint, 
And if you say release, it undoes it, but I want to do expand, which now is going to mean that if I go to my castle copy, you're going to find that I have a group, and in that group, I should have several, I should have several groups. Oh my God, look at all these groups. But what do I really need? I only need that. The one piece right here. That one piece. So what I'll do is I'll ungroup everything. Because remember what I told you, if in doubt, just ungroup until it's all back to normal. And now I can grab this piece and move it over. I can grab this piece. I don't know why it's doing that. But you know, I'm going to cut that into memory. And I'll come back out of, it, out of that shape. And I can delete that entire layer so they don't need it anymore. And then on my Castle 2 layer, I can paste that shape. If I was on, oops, if I was on the Castle 1 layer, I can paste that shape. And what you're going to find is, is there it is. There is my window. Isn't that beautiful? It's a pretty little window right there. And I can copy and paste it again. And I have a second window. And if I want to make sure those two windows are lined up, I can come over to my alignment tools and I can do that. And that makes me happy. And I can come over here and I can line them up. And if I want to make sure that they're in the right spot, I can put a guide in between those two crenellations. I have to turn the guides back on. I have to go um, under guides. I mean, yeah, uh, under, wait, where are the guides? Here under guides, I would say show guides, or they are. So there it is. And then I could come over here and I can space them until I'm happy that they're centered properly. And now that, that I've done that, I can grab those two items and I can copy them. Where am I gonna put them? I'm gonna put them in the same spot on this side. I can paste them, move them over here. Now what layer am I on? Remember what layer I'm on? I'm on castle one. As a matter of fact, I've, I've kept only one layer open, which is me being clever. And I can bring them down, and the smart guides will pop them into place. If you want to double check, I can grab all four items, and I can hit the alignment tool, and they're all lined up. So now I have these four little windows there. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Now, what's neat about it is it looks really good, but the other thing here is, is that technically, I want to see the windows here as well, remember? I want to be able to see out this window to the green, as it were. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come over here, I'm going to paste another one. And I'm going to paste, instead of all three of them, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say I'm going to paste this one to be right here, this one to be right here, and then I'm going to paste another one to be right here. Now, to be effective, since I want my lineup to be perfect, but I don't want it to be that perfect, I'm actually going to make this one a little bit bigger. I'm going to come over here and make it a teeny little bit bigger. I'm going to make this one a little bigger. And make it a little bigger. And the reason I'm doing this is, is that later on when I move this, when I cut the holes out, it'll make really cool kind of a, a double effect on the window. So there'll be a small window leading to a big window leading to the green. Also gives me a little bit of room to play. So does that make sense? So let me turn off, uh, let me turn off the castle too so you can see what I've done. Is I have now, on this layer, I have placed... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven windows. And they're all on castle, this all on castle one layer. The other ones are hidden. And I can even turn this one off if you wanted to see that one by itself. And now, on the same layer, I could come over here. I could grab this and I can say object path divide objects below. Ta da! Do it again. Object, path, divide objects below. Ta-da! Object, path, divide objects below. You have to do one object at a time. Object, path, divide objects below. Remember, I'm on the same layer right now. It's just a matter of one, one object on top of the other. And again, there may be some other magical way of doing it. I'm sure there is. This is just the way I do it, and it makes me happy. So, I learn every day, by the way. I'm always learning new techniques, and I always... You know, I'm always flabbergasted. And then I can come over here and go, don't want that window, 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 don't want that window. Want that window. Save! Castle 2 and the trees. Now, technically, if I come over here to Castle 2, and I unlock Castle 1, 
and I were to make the castle too transparent, come on, you can do it. There we go. If I were to make castle too transparent, you realize that technically I'm doing all of this cutting work for absolutely nothing. Again, it's another one of those examples that I just showed you where I'm doing all this cutting for the Blowforge and it doesn't count for anything. And for me, that's just a waste of time. Now, I know this is going to seem a little less elegant because when you put the pieces together, they're not as good. But when you think about just, you know, cuts and one, one more place for it to miss score, one more little thing for you to have to cut, straight lines are easier to fix than others. So what that means is, is that I could come over here and I can... Um, and again, technically, it's oh, right up to here, right? Now, I'll do it a little bit differently this time. Ooh, I'll do something different this time. I'll lock the castle. I'll come over here, and I'm going to grab a rectangle, if this layer was unlocked, which it is. I'm going to grab a rectangle, and I'm going to come all the way down to there. That makes me feel good. Then I'm going to grab this shape. I'm going to do my favorite. What is it? half divide objects below and that means that I can come over here and I can delete that oops now this time I think I'm in uh, before I do that stop 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 back up a little bit I've got to come over here to this and look I have a group I have all these things in that group and I can just delete them that way and now it's much better so I've got my half castle with my Beautiful little holes in it. Now, am I going to delete any of this stuff? No, we'll leave that just as is. That, that's what we want. Uh, technically, I could get rid of that shape, but I'm going to leave that in there. I'm going for the stuff that's, you know, big. I mean, yes, technically I could come over here and go like that, but what am I really doing? It's not that big. Of, that doesn't affect me in the daily, uh, as much. Come back over to Castle 1, highlight it, and make it gray again. Beautiful. Isn't that great? That makes me happy. Uh-oh. Did everyone see my problem? Uh-oh. And that's the kind of thing that happens after a while, is that things like this happen, where you're like, this one's got green in it, and this one doesn't. So how do I fix that? Well, technically, it would have been nice if I saved that shape. Did I save that shape? Is that shape still in memory? Yes, it is. How lucky is that? So I could come over here. Like, why are you doing the big ones? The reason I'm doing the big ones is because if I do this, it'll be really cool if I paint all the way through. So let's do, first let's hide the big castle. I don't need that one anymore. Oh, I guess I do need the big castle because I put all these on it. So cut them out, hide the big castle, lock the big castle, Go to the trees, paste them there. Actually, I'm going to paste, I'm going to hit paste in place, puts them exactly where they're supposed to be. Go to my first castle layer and make it transparent. Excellent, or just an outline, it's not really transparent. And then I can sort of see what's going on. So if I make this one a little bigger, I can go like that. Make sure that castle layer is locked. Copy and paste. And copy and paste. And if all goes to plan, now, if I were to delete this right now, I would get a little bit of a, a ledge like that, and that would make me very unhappy. So I'm going to see what I can do with the direct selection tool instead. Do, do, do. Anchor that way. Do, do, do. Anchor that way. Do, do, do. Yeah, 
that's working. Good. So I don't even have to delete those holes. They're just going to be there. Let's come around the other side. See if I can do something similar. Right, anchor that way. There we go. So I don't have to delete those holes either. They're just going to be there. These, however, I'm going to delete. So I come over here and I do divide objects below. Divide objects below. Divide objects below. If I can hit delete, I can come over to my trees and I can delete all of my little paths. Good to go. I can then lock that layer. I can come over here my castle one. I can make that opaque again. And then I can make this one opaque on top of it. And now we have sort of trees that we can see out into the wilderness. Ooh, that's fun. Oh, and let's not forget, it's for Arthur. And he's got a mountain behind him. You're like, uh-oh, now you've got other problems with the mountains. Don't worry. We're getting there. We're getting there. Hmm, this is nice. Boy, that makes me happy. But before I go, before I go any further... Before I go any further, I'm going to do what I should have done before. And as I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to paste one of these spots, put it up in the corner, and say spot for later. Just keep that shape there in case I need it in a little bit. Because I've had to use it multiple times so far. It would be nice to have that just in case we need it again. All right. Now, one of the things you're going to notice is just how really nice this is, right? You've got this negative space here. It overlaps nicely here. But really, the problem that we're going to run into is, is that we need a both a positive and negative space here in terms of the background space. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move Arthur out of the way for a moment, hide him again. And I'm going to come over here. I'm going to make a copy of my mountain one more time, of my, uh, my base. Duplicate my base layer, unlock my base layer, unlock my mountain. Remember, I've got my different shapes here. Um, technically, I should back up my mountain. You know what? I I'm so paranoid about my mountain, I may back him up. And by backing up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the mountain. I'm going to call it mountain. Back up. This is in case I make a mistake. Lock him and hide him. Fine, he's gone. I'm going to take this mountain. I'm going to, I'm going to highlight him. It is just one piece, you know. Right, it's one piece, isn't it? Yeah, it's one old, one old big old path. And then I'm going to do my favorite. What did I do? D divide objects below. Now, this is very strange again, because my mountain layer is now empty, right? My mountain layer is gone. Because what happens is divide object below says whatever is on top cuts out the bottom layer. It's the cookie cutter. So it's gone. So I come over here and I can delete my mountain. Beautiful. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn off all the other layers except for this one base mountain layer that I'm playing with. And then I'm going to highlight everything. And I'm going to say that everything should be brown. All right. That's pretty good. Notice, by the way, we have a lot more pieces than we used to. Okay with that. Let's take a look. Do we need that top piece? No. Mm. Let's come over here and take a look at what we have. All right, so we have this top piece right over here. No, that's not the top piece. Where's the top piece? There's the top piece. I don't need the top piece, so I can delete that. But what I could do is I could say that this piece here isn't brown, but it's like a light brown. And that this piece here is also light brown. And then I can say that this piece here, which is almost everything else, is also a light brown. And this piece here is also a light brown. Because both of these pieces of wood are gonna be there, they're just gonna be painted differently. And if I bring my base back up, now you get where I'm going, right? Now, all of a sudden, you can see that layer one, which is the base, and layer two is the mountain, right? And Arthur, right? That's, that's going to be, this is on layer two. Layer three is the trees. 
on top of layer three is the layer four is the castle and layer five is the next castle and then we'll put little spacers in here to keep those those flags up and that looks pretty good that look pretty good makes me happy now there's a lot of stuff here that i'm completely wasting space with and we'll get to that in a minute we'll talk about the areas in which we're wasted but like if we if we just were to look at this holistically for a moment this looks pretty damn good it looks yeah that looks very very nice now we're going to run into two other problems in a minute but right now i'm just still building the composition i'm very happy with the way this is coming along now you've got to ask yourself the big question which of course is is what what color should this be and what color should this be at the end of the day it doesn't really matter it's very easy for us to go through and paint a little white, a little orange spot here a little orange spot here there's no lines here that's just paint so we'll just basically figure out what we're going to do as we get closer to it over here makes a bit more of a difference this makes a bit more of a difference this makes a bit more of a difference now, how are we going to approach all of this? Well, we're not going to do any cutting just yet. The first thing we want to do is ask ourselves, how much are we wasting? What do you mean by how much are we wasting? How much weird cutting have we even tried to do? Well, let's, let's hide Arthur. We don't need Arthur for a minute. Let's come over here and grab uh, all of the layers that we have available to us. Make them transparent and give it a nice big one-point stroke. Maybe even bigger two-point stroke right so you can kind of see what we're looking at right and then you're like oh my god all of this detail isn't going to be visible by anybody that's where it gets funny see all this stuff none of that even shows up kind of weird isn't it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to try to create and i bought about 12 different ways of doing this i'm going to do it a slightly different way right now just because it'll be fun for you to see i'm going to lock all these other layers we do have to remember which is the positive and which is the negative space. That is important. But while I do that, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to make a new layer um, that is just going to basically be simplifying my mountain, right? I want to think about what I don't need to see. So I'm going to come over here on this layer and I'm going to start drawing a line. Oops. And when you draw a line, you basically play connect the dots. So I'm going to come over here and start with this line right here. I'm happy with that line right there. And that connected shape there. Um, that does not go there. I should come over here and move that point down. I have to pick that point up and there we go. Now that comes over here like that. And let's take a look. What else can I get rid of? And again, this is all sort of obscured. Yeah, it's all sort of obscured. Technically, I can go from here to here. Now, I'm going to turn off... Well, I'm not going to turn off the snap just yet. I need the snap. And I can go from... here to there. And I can go from here to there. Yeah. No one needs to see that. I can go from here to there, right? Now, when it comes to the rest of this, again, no one's going to see any of this mountain. So I can go from here to there. And then I can go from here to there. And actually, I, I don't even need the mountain back here. I even raised that up too much. So let's come over here and bring this up a little bit higher. Here to there. I just like playing connect the dots. And what I'm doing is, is I'm creating a shape that basically obscures everything that I don't need to see because the mountain isn't going to be there. So all those details that we're putting into the mountain would be just a complete and utter waste. And of course, I'm using the direct selection tool to move the anchor points together and if you're worried about how sloppy or not sloppy I am, don't, because what I'm about to do in a minute is going to resolve itself fairly quickly. Um, right, so right, this doesn't show up because that's behind the grass. This doesn't show up because it's, it's in front of the grass. There we go. 
That doesn't show up because it's behind everything else. This doesn't show up over there. This doesn't show up over there. Over there. Over there. Over there. Over there. And then lastly, over there. So, what have I just made? I made a very strange polygon. And this strange polygon, I'm going to fill. Well, well, it's not a polygon yet. It's just a bunch of lines, and you can't fill a bunch of lines. That is correct. But remember, I could come over here, and I can uh, select all of my lines. Object, Live Paint, Make. Come over here to my Live Paint bucket. Grab a color, and fill. Now it's a shape. Hallelujah. Look at that. Then I can go Object, Live Paint, Expand. And I can come into my folder and see what I've made. I made a group full of weird things. But really what I care about is this shape. Everything else I don't care about. So I will grab this shape and I will cut it. Uh, apparently I grabbed everything. I only want to grab this shape. So I will go all the way inside. Or I, you know, I think I can, un I think I can ungroup everything. Let's see if I can ungroup will work. Nope, it will not. Un ungroup will not work in this case. So I will just double click until I get all the way to the piece that I want. Cut it. Back away. Is that gonna work? I don't think so. I don't think it's gonna work. No, that did not work. I deleted the wrong item. Let's go back a little bit. Ooh, I think I ruined it. All right, let's try that again. I have a series of lines. Yay, series of lines. Highlight them all. Object, live paint, make. Live paint bucket, purple, fill. Yay. Object, live paint, expand. All right, let's stop for a moment. Save this document. I don't know why I keep saying that. I'm fine with that. So I come over here, and there is a group. Aha, there is a group. Object. There is a group. Object ungroup. And if we look inside of it, we'll realize that we have another group. Object ungroup. And that, and somewhere in here is the path that I want. In the meantime, I will delete all the pieces that I don't want. And now I'm left with my one path, which is what I do want. Hallelujah. Now, why did I do this? Well, this is where it gets a little bit funky. Let's come over here and hide this for a moment. And let's look at our mountain. Let's hide everything from... Wait, ooh, what, what, what is... Oh, let me hide the trees. Let's look at our mountain. Our mountain is made up of several items. There's made up of this path and that little itty bitty piece. Oh, that little piece is, which should be the other color, by the way. That's a mistake. That piece should be the other color. So it's made up of the dark part of the mountain and all of the light parts of the mountain. And that should be the light part of the mountain. I don't know why. I did. Well, we'll fix that in a minute. All right, fine. So if I grab this path over here, I want this to be the dark part of the mountain. So I come over here and I make it brown. I always forget to highlight things first. I make it brown. I then grab my, um, not the live paint bucket tool, I grab my favorite shape builder tool and I say you and you, oops, I guess I have to highlight everything. I say you and you and you and you and you and you, not you, I guess you, yeah, you and you and you and you, because they're already brown, and you and you and you and you and you and you should all be the same piece. And that basically 
made a much simpler piece. I got rid of actually many of the other paths, right? Because now this is a small piece, and this is a small piece, and this is just a wild and wacky shaped, but valid piece. And then this piece over here, for some strange reason, which is unhappily a different piece, this piece over here needs to be... What color is that? Is that orange? No, it's not. Stop that again. What color is this? Oh, there it is. So what color is that? That is, oh, there it is, the light, light, light brown. So let's grab this piece here. Zoom in here. Oh, is it the right color? That piece right there needs to be that color right there. Not really, by the way, from a line perspective. All right, last thing, come out of here. And this, of course, is our new mountain. But I'm about to destroy it again because I want to get rid of the rest of the shape. Uh-oh, I made a mistake. Do you see it? I made a mistake. Undo, 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 undo. I made a mistake. All right, I accidentally did that piece. It's all right. I'm allowed to make mistakes. So... Ooh, that is a dangerous piece right there anyway. That'll work. All right, first things first, let's fix this piece right here. There we go. Grab that one piece. Zoom in and grab that one piece. small piece and yes technically I don't have to be doing this I'm kind of fussy that way we'll see when I finally cut it whether it even looks good that way all right so one two three four keep let's keep those four big pieces here so what do I do highlight everything and let's see if we can do it without ruining it this time Shape Builder tool. Brown, 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 brown. Aha! Brown. Ooh. Brown. Brown, brown, brown. Brown, brown, brown. brown. I'm trying to figure out whether or not if I should do the, the last piece or not and this subtract later, but I'm going to hedge my bets and say yes. Brown. All right, that worked. You're like, how did that work? Because if I grab just the outside piece, this big compound path, I can make it brown. One, two, three, four. And we'll get to you later. And we'll zoom back in on you. There we go. Now, of course, what do I need to do? First, now that I verify that that works right, right? Because again, if I turn off the... Um, see, there's that. And there's that. And there's the pieces that I don't need. See, look at that. Isn't that nice? And then, of course, there's the piece around it. So it does a beautiful job. So last thing I need to do is grab this because I don't only have to worry about that and grab my copy my circle one more time grab this piece right here and say object what divide objects below more than one object is selected how do you figure Fine, you win. 
I'll do it the other way around. I will subtract the, mount, the, the circle from the mountain. So I will come over here, grab the circle, object, path, divide objects below. Ha 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 ha. Grab the outer circle, and we're good to go. <clears throat> what are these weird black shapes? I don't know. I don't need them. And this is my mountain. Now, this only worked if it worked. In other words, when I put my trees back up and I make them green, will they look Will, will it be noticeable? And the answer is no. And then if I put my castle back up and I make it gray, will it be noticeable? And the answer is no. And then if I were to take my second castle back up and I were to make it, um, oops, and I were to make it dark gray, would I notice it? And the answer is no. So you can see, by doing all of this, I've given myself a huge number of cuts that I don't need to make. And this is me being stupid. Technically, so is this. So I can get rid of that in a later date. And I'll show, in a later date, it's going to be in about five minutes, when I show you the other mistakes that we've made. So this looks pretty good, right? Because you can't tell. That doesn't look good. So I've made a few mistakes along the way, but not as much as you think. And by the way, when I say uh, made a few mistakes, the reality of it is, is that if I were to cut this right now, the mountain would double cut, and that would be very, very bad. I don't want the mountain to double cut. So technically, uh, all of these negative spaces, I want gone, except for the teeny little one that I'm going to get rid of here. Like, I don't need that to be there. Wait, did I do There we go. I don't need that. I don't know. Let's try that again. Oh, it's locked. That's why. Uh -huh. I don't need that to be there. And I don't need this to be there. And I don't need this to be there. And I don't need this to be there. Because they are internal shapes. They are surrounded by, and so they'll already cut anyway. I've only colored them so that you could see something interestingly. And that also means that I can modify them accordingly. My big problem here is that I made this shape here and I shouldn't have. Is that the, technically I don't need this shape here. And it's just a bad mistake. Even though I spent so much time fussing and fighting with it, I'm literally going to say, uh... No. And that gets rid of that. Zoom out and change this to brown. There we go. So now the cool thing here is because I've done this, because this shape is permanent and these things are smaller and these are all negative spaces, if there's any mistakes that I've made, and there are mistakes that I've made, I'll be able to actually fix them a lot more cleverly than I thought I would have otherwise. Let's lock the tree layer and let me show you what I mean. Right? This looks good. This is a problem, right? It's not like that little problem right there. Well, because this isn't really a shape anymore, all I can do is pick up that anchor point and go like that, and it's no longer a problem. And I want to keep these things straight. There we go. That looks a little bit more correct, right? So that comes over here. And over here, where I've done all this stuff over here, which makes no sense whatsoever in the light of day, all I have to do is delete these anchor points and watch as the shape just resolves itself. And then I can come over here and do that. And that takes care of it too. We'll leave that little tree thing in there. That's pretty cool. All right. Lock the mountain. Oh, there I can lock the mountain. We'll turn the castle back on. Castle on. Castle on. So now all the windows go towards the mountain, which is pretty cool. So we can see through we can see through into the mountain. It'll be it'll be it'll be brown there, except the mountain sort of holds up, which is really important for us. And if I decided I want the shape don't move it, just modify it. 
I wanted to modify it like that, I could do that accordingly. Or if I wanted to don't move it, just modify it. You have to click and then click again. It's always the trick. Then I can do something like that. A little easier to watch. And that is pretty cool. Where's Arthur? There's Arthur. Now, let's again remind ourselves there's going to be no black outlines on any of this type of stuff, right? So if I come over here to this castle layer and I click on, let me, let me see what, let me unlock some of these layers. Right. Everything. I guess I can delete mountain backup now, but I'm not going to. Um, and I'll, I'll move spot for later there as well. There we go. Oops. So let's take a look. Oops. I, how did I move those? I, oh my God, I moved them into the layer. Don't do that. There we go. There we go. So let's take a look at each of these things. So let's be really practical. The mountain is going to have no stroke whatsoever. Oh, let me rephrase that. Yeah, the mountain's going to have no stroke whatsoever. It's going to be a blob of color. And the trees are going to have no stroke whatsoever. It's going to be a blob of color. And the castle is going to have no stroke whatsoever. It's going to be a blob of color. And the other castle is going to be no stroke whatsoever. It's going to be a blob of color. And then lastly, Arthur himself, which of course as a group. So we'll... Oh, I'm using the direct selection tool. That's a mistake. Um, oh, I could have done everything at once. And I just said, nobody has a stroke. There you go. And that is our composition. Yay! Does that make you happy? Let's take a look to see if there's a mistake or two. Remember, there'll be a little... Oh, yeah, there's a little bit right over here that I'd like to fix. All right, I'm happy with the way all this looks. But there's a little bit over here on this mountain I could I could I could get away with fixing a bit. I, I don't I just don't like how close it is over there. Again, grab the direct selection tool. And, you always gotta remember, you click it once and you click it twice. You bring it in like that. That makes me a little happier. A little less little little, little details here or there make me happy. Beautiful. So we are almost done for the night. And it's only been an hour and 26 minutes for putting this together. A few hiccups along the way, but nothing major tonight. I'm really happy with this. I hope uh, the demonstrations helped you some. There's going to be two problems that we're going to run into. Uh, one that will get resolved uh, along the way. And th the idea is very simply this. This doesn't fit in my Glowforge. You're like, but don't you have the pass-through? This doesn't fit in my Glowforge. So the question is going to be, how do I, as efficiently as possible cut all these pieces out so they fit on my bed, how do I break it down to do that and mask where the lines are? Now, I did this the other day and everything was great, except I did end up having a line here and here. And the question was, is what could we put there that would cover it up? Maybe some sort of a bush or a shrubbery. Uh, I don't have a bush or a shrubbery, so I'm going to, and because it really is there to mask things, I'm going to save that for the next video. So again, I hope you enjoyed this. A little bit cleaner than what I had recorded previously. This, my name is Jared Bendis, JaredX2 on Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, whatever. Uh, like, follow, all sorts of good things. Again, be nice. There's more than one way to skin a cat. This is the way I happen to do it. I think this has been helpful. The next video will be the one focused more on how to get it to fit in the Glowforge. That's a whole different beast. Thank you for watching.